All right. Good morning. How's everybody doing on this Saturday? Um, I hope you have a nice weekend planned and hopefully you are painting at some point this weekend, if not multiple points. So I'm just refreshing the feed to make sure that the video is coming in clear. This is Paint with Lovejoy and today's video is going to be a Mandarin duck. Um, and I actually had no idea how colorful and awesome and beautiful they were until I started looking at photos for this painting. So we will be using a lot of colors today. Um, awesome. Hi, Denise. Welcome from New York. Uh, and cold and sunny there. Uh, it is kind of chilly and cloudy here, May Gray in San Diego. But thanks for joining us. All right, so like I said, this is a really colorful duck. We're going to be putting the duck in the water. Um, and then we've got, oh my gosh, like I said, amazing colors. We've got purples, some light tan, orange. You know, we've got these great little lines that are going to be coming off the cheek. Like, I actually had a hard time picking which picture to reference because they have so many cool colors. Um, so a few things about what you're looking at. I am reusing a... Uh, re-gessoed, resurfaced canvas. That's why you can see the texture and a bit of a hazy image underneath. And this is a good way to kind of keep reusing canvases and get a lot of practice in. But if you are making a painting for a gift, please use a brand new canvas or panel. It just looks nicer. And then we have what I call our outline on here. And you've got two options. Pause the video, draw what you see, and then pick up the video for the painting portion. Or at the end of this video, and there's going to be a link in the description box below. I will upload this design to my website. You can purchase, download, and use carbon paper to transfer this to your canvas. And then again, pick up where the painting portion starts. So a few different ways um, to get your initial composition on here. And the traceable is a nice way for my first time painters to not have to stress about drawing. And then you can jump right into painting. So for today's painting, um, I am using brushwork. We're going to start with the background, the water, and then we're going to jump from our light colors to our darker colors as we move into um, the colors on our duck. So I am starting with a light blue, so I'm pulling some of that white aside, grabbing a touch of blue. You can kind of get to your shade that you want, and if you prefer teal or you prefer something else, please feel free to switch out your colors. Now, as you're working with your paint, and if this is your first time painting, try a few different brush strokes. You can try the full width, you can try turning it sideways, or the favorite one is just making X marks and slapping it back and forth. So likely that's the one I'll be using. And we are going to cover this kind of coming from the edges of those lines to the edges of the canvas. And if you are painting on a stretched canvas where it's a little bit thicker, I'm painting on a panel today. But if you're painting on a stretch canvas and you plan on keeping this painting, carry that color over the tops, the sides, and the bottom. That way it looks nice when you hang it on the wall and that color wraps around the edge. Now, if you have to mix your color at any point today, a second or third time, do not stress about getting the exact same shade or value. A little bit of variety in your artwork is to your benefit. And the more that you mix your colors, the more your brain um, understands what it takes to get to that shade and it's learning a lot each time you mix your color. So try not to get too frustrated with yourself ever but especially in painting. All right and if you are using student grade paint apply your paint a little bit thicker you will notice that it may be a little more transparent or it dries a little bit faster so sometimes you do have to adjust based on the tools that you are using at any given time. And if you need to switch down to a smaller brush, feel free. I have the tendency to just kind of stick with one brush and sometimes forget to switch down. But just because I don't switch brushes doesn't mean you can't. So always adjust for what you need at home. And should you paint anything today or you get your background on the inside of your duck like I just did, don't freak out, relax, and let it dry and you just paint right on top of it again. All right, so yeah, let me jump over. Awesome, awesome. Hi, Denise, Anita, Rhonda, and that's it. Okay, <laughs> you guys are saying hi to each other. Awesome, awesome. And I love that you guys are kind of developing your own little community and 
looking forward to seeing each other and talking um, on the chat while I'm painting too. So that's just makes me very, very happy. All right. And again, just filling in the space. You can see a few places where I will just kind of paint right over those lines. We are going to put part of the duck reflection in the water, but we'll do that when we get to those colors. So like I said, until then, I'm just going to paint right over that edge. And for this video or any of the videos on my channel, you do not have to uh, complete them with paint. If you want to do crayons or markers or colored pencils and just use the video as a guide for where you would place particular colors, feel free to use that as a guide. Right now with all the things happening in the world, uh, we need our creative outlets. Our mental capacity really needs this creativity. So use whatever you have at home. And don't feel like you have to go buy brand new supplies just to get creative. Use what you have. Uh, rage your, if you've got kids, I'm sure that hopefully they've got some art supplies somewhere. Go raid their closet, get creative with them. Um, but just your future self will be really grateful you painted today. All right, so we've kind of got our wishy-washy of different shades of blue. And we're going to go in with some darker colors and do wet on wet blending. So this is a the direct blue. I'm going to slap this in a few places, and then I'm going to go back and kind of blend it in. And because I am on a regessoed surface, my paint is drying on the fast side. So likely I'll go back and grab that middle blue color. Um, to mix in with it. So again, right now I'm just kind of slapping that dark blue in kind of some random, slightly random places. <clears throat> then you can kind of clean that brush off a little bit and then go back and we've got two blending methods that we've been going over during um, these demos. One's gonna be just kind of smearing it into that base layer. And sometimes that's a lot of fun and sometimes you may want a finger paint to do that. The other one that's been effective for a lot of people is this stabbing method. And it does ruin your brushes a little bit faster, but it is kind of a fun method to do. And it picks up that underneath color plus the color um, that you applied to it. So like I said, I'm going to be making some more of that medium blue to go back in and blend this darker blue into it. But you do what's comfortable for you. Try a few of those blending methods. Um, just whatever you're feeling for this moment in time while you're painting. Go with that. If you feel like finger painting and blending, Go right ahead. It's your house. Just don't touch your walls and wash your hands when you're done. All right, and if there are places that maybe you wanted a little bit lighter, you can grab that direct white. Same thing that we did with the blue. Just kind of slap it on top and then blend it in. And try to get in the habit of blending with your paint compared to blending with water. Um, it is very tempting and it is a quick, easy fix. Like say right here, this is starting to dry out a little bit. If I add just a touch of water to my brush, it kind of resaturates it and makes it a little bit easier to blend. But that's also going to dry out your paint even faster. So only use that method um, as kind of a last resort. Try to do all your blending with the wet paint and not just the water being added to the paint. Okay, let's see. Not bad. I'm actually going to stand up and see it in the camera first. Okay, not bad. So when you take your progress pictures, and that's something that I encourage a lot of, um, when you look at it on your screen, it's the same thing as looking at it from 20 feet away without getting out of your chair. And when you're in the process of painting, I encourage that you get out of your chair and look at it from a distance. But when you look at it on your phone, uh, that little phone screen, it's the same thing as looking at it from 20 feet away without getting out of your chair while you're painting. So just another tool to kind of utilize while you are developing your creative style. All right, so let's see, I'm gonna scan through, see if there's any questions. Looks like you guys are having an awesome conversation. Excellent, hi Ashley, thanks for joining. Um, and kids, Denise, kids count as cats. I have two cats. Those are my kids. 
I will not have any kids, human kids anyway. Um, cool, and what, Rhonda, I will throw a few more watercolors in there and I have been filming my watercolors um, and I'm gonna do these little voiceovers on top of those. So that's just in the middle stages of editing. All right. And Leilani, I think I said your name correct. Welcome, thanks for joining us. Aw. And Rhonda, that'll be nice. We can definitely, we're gonna have some flowers. I think I've got a uh, abstract background with tulips flowers for tomorrow. All right, okay. So let's move into painting our Mandarin duck. And because he's got this great like plume of feathers on the side of his face. That's about the only thing I can think of. We're actually going to start here and get this kind of dark bluish purple chest on there. So that way this can dry by the time we come and need to do the plume over it. So going just slightly out of order um, than I normally would just so we can incorporate the drying time. So I am still using this large brush and I really like this uh, purple and blue color combo. So I'm going to start with the blue and probably about a one-to-one -one ratio. Mix that blue and purple. And it's just, it's a really yummy, deep, cool purplish blue. All right. And we're gonna place that color on there. And then I think we might do a little hint of purple, a little highlight. And we're actually gonna place this color in two places. It'll be on the chest and then on the crown of this duck. So here again, I'm just gonna basically place right on top of it. And I am painting a little bit over that water edge, uh, the perimeter of the duck. So that way I'm going right over those lines that I had on in the beginning. And I'm going to create, let's see, this is coming all the way up to that line right here. And like I said, we're going to make this a little bit larger than it needs to be, just so that way this great plume can be overlapped. So this is going to look kind of funky, so don't judge your duck yet. I'm gonna make a little bit more because again, I'm on that student grade paint. So my paint's kind of transparent. So as I apply it thicker, instead of coming in perpendicular, I come in at about 45 degree angle. And that will allow me to keep the paint a little bit thicker and less transparent because it's the brush strokes that are hitting against the, uh, the canvas that show the brush strokes when you do that. All right, and then we've got a little bit of this on his crown. And same thing here, I'm going to come back and apply this a little bit thicker. All right, and just looking over at the other comments, um, tomorrow is not a watercolor, but I will add it into the other ones for the for the other demos. Tomorrow I was planning on painting the flowers in acrylics. I'm still mastering watercolors, so we're getting there. <laughs> All right, so once we've kind of got those colors on there, let's see, we're gonna grab a little bit of that straight purple and we're gonna slap it right on top of this color. And it may be a little hard to see because the purple and the blue are so dark, um, but kind of right underneath the beak, I want a little bit more of an infusion of the purple. So I'm placing it on there. And again, with that light pressure, just kind of gliding it on top of that darker blue. Um, and like I said, it may be very, very difficult for you to tell at home that I have the purple here and then the blue purple is here. Um, so just kind of place it in the general area. Then we're going to take that purple again. And let's see on the back of his little head right here. I think it's the spot, there we go. He's got a nice infusion of purple. I might have to do a Birds of Paradise series after this just because they're so colorful as well. All right, and it, as you're watching at home, um, from all the photos that I saw of these ducks, like they do come in a variety of uh, colors and intensities, so you don't have to match what I'm doing exactly. And all you're doing is looking at where I place it, the shape that it makes when I place it on there, and then mimicking that to the best of your ability at home. And like I said, it does not have to be perfect. So now I'm grabbing that direct blue. We've got a little bit darker, a little bit bluish right here. And let's see, it creates 
a little bit of a curve and shoots over to this area and then it's going to be coming all the way back here and that little plume will overlap uh, just a portion of that area and this one for the blue again i'm just kind of using that brush with light pressure applying that paint on there a little bit thicker and then we've got one more spot and then we will be switching colors this little butt tail area um, it looks a bit more like a blue black but i'm really enjoying the blue purple so we're going to go back and make it a little more blue purple i don't think he'll mind me changing up his colors and we will put some of that direct purple on this too like we did on the chest All right, and then grabbing that direct purple, literally just kind of slap it on there, kind of in the middle. And then again, keeping that brush kind of flat at that 45 degree angle. I'm just kind of resting that, um, squishing that into it. All right, so let's see. Now we're gonna clean that brush really good. Let's see, we'll do that black and green. Okay, I was deciding on where we were going next. All right, that one's gonna be black. All right, we're gonna move over to the beak now and I'm actually gonna move into the smaller brush and it's a bit of a magenta beak. So we're gonna start, let me throw some more white on there actually. Oops, sorry about that. The paints tend to do that, totally okay to laugh. All my students usually laugh like kindergartners when that happens. <laughs> All right, so let's see, we're making our magenta. So I'm pulling some of that white aside I'm gonna grab, you know, a decent, I was gonna say, it's always easier to start off light. So start with a small amount of your red and mix it in and you can always add more. Yeah, that's lighter. So I actually wanna add more. I wanna go to kind of a medium magenta. Let's go a little more intense. And if this is kind of too pinkish, too light for you, add a touch of orange and it just warms it up a little bit more. There we go. Makes it a little less cool pinky. All right, so here I'll actually be overlapping since I did fill in um, or my background overlapped onto this portion. But fill in that whole beak. We'll put some details on top of it. And while we have this color, let's see, we've got a little section of it right here. we've got a little section right here we're going to overlap some of the plume on this so putting some of those base underneath colors in first and if your purple is still a little bit wet as you come up next to that totally okay you can soften that line a little bit um, all right so wipe that brush off we're going to add a tiny amount of white and we're going to put a highlight on the beak and then we'll move on to another color and let's see, looking to see if there's any other questions. Nope, you guys are still chatting amongst yourself. Awesome. And yes, Birds of Paradise would be beautiful to paint. So I will put those on the list. All right, so grab it a touch of that white. And on the top of the beak and towards the end, we're just going to kind of put that little curve. And it's about from halfway to the beak to the end with a little curve. Wipe that brush off. And then again, with that light pressure, we're just going to squish that uh, white into the pink and it is going to diffuse a little bit. But we basically, that's indicating that we have the sun hitting in that spot. All right. And clean the brush. We're going to go to a yellow and orange mixture. Actually, we're going to do a light yellow orange here. And then we'll get a little bit hanging out here. And then we've got a bright really pretty orange and then we'll start that plume all right so we are jumping around all right so pull that white aside i'm going to add a touch of yellow to it we are going on the light side and then i will add a tiny amount of orange to that there we go so super super light and we're going to kind of fill in this whole area right here this whole section so likely i'm gonna have to make more of that color and we're going to bring it all the way up to that blue. And if your other colors are still wet, be very conscious of 
coming up next to them with this lighter color. If you happen to get some of that blue or purple in this mixture, just take a paper towel, wipe it off, and then reapply this light color. Make a little bit more. Oops, way too much orange. There we go. And again, as you're applying your paint, just play with the pressure. You're getting comfortable. Your muscles are learning a lot on how to hold the paintbrush, what it feels like, how to blend. And these are all skills that you just, every time that you paint, you're building on more and more. All right, so this mixture that we just did right here, we're gonna add a little bit more orange to it. So you can just do your perimeter mixing if you need to. <clears throat> and then we kind of have a little haze just hanging out right here. So I'm just gonna slap that kind of on top of this, just kind of wiggle it back and then wipe that brush off. And then we're gonna blend that into it a little bit, but trying to keep this darker color um, kind of on the bottom of the bird where it's sitting close into the water. We're not bringing it too far up into the body. All right, and then clean that brush off. We're gonna grab some pure white, throw that into it, and we're going a little bit lighter right here. So slap that white on there, wipe that brush off, and then whichever blending method you were finding beneficial today, blend that white into it, and it actually diffused quickly. So I'm just gonna repeat that process. All right, and while we have white on our brush, if you do have some of your sherbet, your light orange color that came in, clean that off and wipe it off. And we're gonna put a base of white right here and a base of white on the head. And then we're gonna layer some of our um, yellow orange mixture into this. So we're kind of putting that base on there. I just keep dropping my brushes today, nice. So super exciting painting white on a white canvas. I apologize. Can't even see where I'm applying it sometimes. But we're filling in this little butt tail section. And then we're gonna come up to where the head is and put this base on here. This part will stay white right here and then it's gonna be that creamy um, sunset color. And we'll bring it right up underneath that eye. Again, I went over that a little bit. And if you go over parts of your eye, don't freak out about it. We will come in with black at the end and we'll reshape that eye. And you do always have the option if you want to outline your drawing at the end for that pop art feel. All right, so there's not too much that actually happens right here. There's just a little hint of the blue. So I'm actually gonna leave that white that's on my brush. Try to grab just a touch of this blue. It doesn't have to be super dark. Oops, that's too much. There we go. So just getting a little bit of that light blue and kind of at the bottom, closest to the water, we're going to put that little stripe on there, wipe that off, and then you can kind of blend that color into it. And if you made that way too dark, I actually like the color of what it is, but if you made yours too dark, just grab some of your white, place it on top of there, and then you can diffuse and tone down that color as needed. Like I said, with blending, it's always kind of a back and forth process. So clean that brush out. You're going to go back and we're going to grab that yellow and white with that little touch of orange, not this shade, but we're going for that lighter one. So if you need to mix it again, white, touch of yellow, tiny amount of orange, and we're going for that lighter version. We will go to for the darker in just a moment. And right here, kind of starting to the left of the eye, we're gonna place that right on the white. And again, it will start to diffuse just a little bit. I'm gonna carry it up to the beak. It's gonna come around here. And I am bringing it underneath that, um, that eye, leaving that little bit right underneath the eye right here. That's gonna stay white. So I'm gonna wipe the brush off now, and now I'm gonna grab some of this darker color. And you might need to make it, so just grab a little bit more of your orange in that same mixture you're just adding more orange to it. And this one's pretty light. We're gonna go one shade darker. So I'm gonna grab a little more orange. I'm gonna 
wipe that brush off and I'm actually just going to grab that direct orange because I've already got that white base on there. It's diffusing kind of quickly. So I'm going to put that chunk on there, wipe the brush off and I'm gonna blend that darker, um, more in, more saturated orange. Blend it going left and kind of around the eye. And again, I'm just using a little bit of that dotting method, that stabbing method and just diffusing a little bit of that orange into the other color. If you need to go back and grab that lighter color, go right ahead. Okay, so that orangish, white, yellow, and orange, it's gonna be a little bit more intense, but we're gonna fill in this area, and then we're gonna start going a little bit darker for that plume and then the top of the head. All right, this one may end up being a 40 minute demo which is okay. All right, so we are going for that darker mixture, starting with that white, adding yellow, and we are going for that darker orange, so you can be a little more generous with your orange that you're adding. So then going for about that same color, we're gonna fill in the whole little, um, what are we gonna say, call it? It looks kind of like a sail on here. Definitely makes him look very pretty and attractive for his dance for his mate. And I am making sure I go right over all of those outlines so you won't you shouldn't be able to see any of my black outlines by the time I'm done. And if need to at the end of the video um, I may do one more layer on top of it. So that painting I did yesterday, the Monstera, um, after the video was done, I actually just went and did one more round on it and did exactly what we did in the first round of the video. And it um, intensified, made the colors pop a little bit more, and it made the shading easier because it was that second layer of the acrylic paint. So any of these demos, if you feel like you need to do it one more time, go ahead and do that second round. There's nothing wrong with layering more acrylic paint on top of acrylic paint. All right, so once we've kind of got that little butt flap in there, we're gonna grab that direct orange and we're gonna slap it on there kind of towards the bottom. And then same thing that we've been doing in the other areas, wipe that brush off and we're gonna blend this darker color into the base color that's there. Again, use that light pressure, whichever blending that you have found comfortable with today, stick with that. Then I'm gonna wipe that brush off and I'm gonna grab some of the yellow because again, I want it a little bit lighter right here. So we're slapping that yellow on the top. And remember your lighter colors get eaten up a lot quicker. So less pressure and less brush strokes for this one. Okay, this guy's coming along nicely. All right, we're actually gonna do a little bit of black um, before we do that plume here, because I just actually now realized I forgot about these stripes. All right, so we're actually going to do one other thing first because we're going to put white on there and then we'll put the black stripes. So again, super exciting. White paint's going to go right here on this little tip. Weird looking feather plume. We're also going to put white right here and then we're going to put white down here and then we'll come in with our black. Again, just making sure I'm going over all those lines, so slightly overlapping a few areas. And just going back down to here to overlap that section. All right, let's see, we've got, oh, these guys, these stripes, that's what I was needing. So we're filling in these stripes. We are gonna put black right here and black on the other side, but we'll come into that in a moment. And I am kind of carrying this white up to this area I know, obviously hard to see. And then once you kind of have those two areas filled in, we're gonna take our white and I want you to kind of come from this point and then we're gonna start going into the water. We're gonna get a little bit of these reflections. And this one's a bit of a zigzag and you can reference that traceable a little bit. We're gonna do the same thing with the black when we get to that color as well. 
And then let's see, let's come back over here towards the butt. And this one's gonna be kind of the opposite from what it would be up here. And again, it's just a haze, doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna come in with some watercolors, um, overlapping these at the end of the painting. So clean that brush out. I know, super exciting where we actually put white. Hopefully you guys could see. Then we're gonna grab the black. We're gonna come back in for these little stripes right here. And it does come right up next to that white, but not quite overlapping it. And if you get a little bit of that white into your black, um, the black will actually overpower it. So just add more black paint. And then we're gonna come on the right-hand side of this last stripe, and we will be overlapping some of that um, light yellowish orange color. All right, and then just like we did with the white zigzag lines, we're gonna do the same thing, kind of fill in this space in between. Again, does not have to be perfect because it's just a hint, a reflection on the water. Uh, all right, and then here we've got kind of some yeah, fairly parallel little lines that are gonna go on top of here. So if you want at home, you can let that fully dry before you add this. I'm gonna go ahead and jump right in. And if these small lines are too much for you, switch down to a paper clip or a toothpick. But these are pretty, pretty well spaced. So again, just remember to breathe. It is easier to exhale as you touch the canvas compared to trying to hold your breath. If you know that still gets too much, hum a little tune, uh, talk to yourself, talk to the dog, talk to the cat, talk to somebody else in the room. Um, that even gets you just a little distracted and just has you paint. All right, so we got two more spots we're gonna add this and then we'll jump back into our colors. So we have this little back of whatever this plume is. And I'm gonna do kind of like a little crescent shape first. And then we've got a few little zigzags. It actually almost looks like a little lightning bolt. So about halfway or about a third of the way down from that curve, you're gonna angle the brush in and we're just making like a little peak. So that way we have this nice little peak right here. And then it looks like it's a different section on this side. All right, and then we're gonna put black right in between these two. And then this little fin back here, it is black. So we're actually just seeing the back tip of it. Okay, so let's get this little plume going. We're gonna be moving into, let's see, red and orange. And a little bit of red goes a long way. So I'm gonna leave that pile of orange right there and just start mixing my red. We're just going a little bit darker. All right, and as we do this one, I'm gonna grab my brush that dropped because I actually like using um, this edge a little bit easier so I can get kind of more uh, linear brush strokes. But if you need to, you can actually do it with this one as well. But we're gonna be making these kind of radial brush strokes. Oh, and I actually, I forgot one spot. Sorry about that. So grab the other brush that fell down. All right, one more spot right here with black. I knew I meant I was supposed to bring it over. All right, so at home, um, let this black that I'm just now adding, let it dry before you do your plumes over this because you don't want to be picking up the black. Okay, so now from here, let yours dry at home and then pick up the video, but we're gonna be doing these little angle marks. So I want you, we're making little dash marks and we will be overlapping that little area and we're gonna be bringing it all the way down to where those little zigzag lines were. So use light pressure 
treat your brush kind of like a pencil and every two or three brush strokes grab more paint so that way you're actually applying something because you're going to get into a good groove of making your marks but if you're not actually applying paint to it it's not going to be fun and we're going to let that dry a little bit and then we're going to do it with orange we're going to put a few layers on top of that I'm going to throw some more orange on my plate. And like I said, this plume is overlapping all of these areas. And you can see on mine, I actually just picked up a little bit of the black as I overlapped it. I'm just going to kind of work that into the design. If you do look at a picture of a mandarin duck, you will see that this plume just has so many different cool colors in it. Um, so it would be to your benefit to just take a look at one of their pictures and just overlap your colors immensely on that. All right, so that red and orange color combo also goes up here on his crown, on the roof of his head. And then he's got a little bit here on his chest. This one you may have to do two coats if your paint is on the transparent side. Alright, so I'm going to grab that other middle sized brush. I'm grabbing that direct orange and I'm going to place it kind of thick on top of this. So again, every two brush strokes, I'm grabbing more paint not pressing, pressing very hard with the brush at all. And I am being very generous because I'm applying wet paint on top of wet paint. So if you're, you let your painting dry with acrylic paint um, in between each one of these layers, you will find it easier to add higher saturation colors and layer it on top of each other. Oops, got a little bit of black in there, so just wipe that off. And I'm gonna actually jump right in, clean the brush, and I'm gonna do the same thing with the yellow. So this was a lot to accomplish in a short amount of time, so if you did do this in the time frame that this video is happening, good job. Be kind to yourself. Um, I do recommend that you do the painting again with a longer time frame. You know, the first one's kind of like, I guess, what we could call a color study. And then the second and third time, you take what you learn from your color studies into um, your next painting. So we're constantly, constantly learning. All right, let's see. Um, oh, we got a little bit of blue that goes right here. And then we're gonna, we'll do the blue in the water lines and then we'll go back and touch up that eye. All right, and that should bring us into the conclusion of today's painting. All right, so I'm gonna grab, let's see, that is a little bit of a lighter blue, but still pretty dark. So I'm gonna pull some of this blue aside, just a touch of white, just toning down it so it's not the pure pigment blue. And let's put a little highlight down on this side and on the chest right here. And this is nice and dry, so this should sit and be a nice little highlight contrast. And put a little bit right up here. Okay, so for these water lines, I'm actually going to start with white first because I think it's going to stand out a little bit more. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the pure blue. So I'm keeping with that pointy brush. And again, we're imagining that these are just ripples on top of the water. And as our duck is moving through the water, moving towards the left-hand side, he's breaking the surface of the water. And again, we're just going right over these. I do have a little bit of a wiggle in my brush and it's kind of curving to the contour, the shape, the bottom shape of our duck. And do have them kind of go off the edge of the canvas. 
see we would have a little bit kind of shoot over the edge all right and then you can do the same thing with that direct blue and I do like to kind of put this next to the white just because it gives a bit more of that contrast whoops I grabbed white instead of blue let's grab the blue um, but I like putting the dark blue and the white next to each other because it's two fairly distinct colors and the dark and the light next to it give that illusion of depth. And if you ended up using teal or any other colors in your water, feel free to add that because that would be reflecting. All right. And I would recommend maybe letting this part dry, this little plume, and doing it one more time. I'm going to go in with black and redefine that eye. And that should take us to the conclusion of today's painting. Um, let's see. Oh, and let's see. Questions. Um, okay, New York Skyline. I do actually have a, a demo painting on there that says city, Cityscape. You could follow that and then just switch out and uh, Google New York City skyline and copy that shape compared to what's in the video. But yeah, it can definitely be done. Um, and for feather texture, definitely kind of keeping the overlapping and keeping little wispy lines. So that's going to come with practice with the pressure of your brush and having enough fluidity in your paint. Um, and that's in between having enough, a little bit of water and not having super thick paint, but not having super runny paint. Um, and then you can get a little bit more of the little wispies. So hopefully that answered your feather question. And let's see, stock image, stock photos without copyright infringement. Um, that's kind of an, uh, a detailed, in-depth explanation. So if you copy something exactly as is, even if you are painting it um, in America, I. I there are different degrees of the copyright infringement, but it's stronger in America compared to other countries. Um, I think it's pretty strong in Europe as well. So either you can get permission or you, you can pay for, you can get permission from them. You can pay to have permission from them or search for something that they call royalty free. That basically it's free to the public and you won't get in trouble. The part where you get in trouble is if you create it for personal use, no problem. If you create it to make money off of and you don't give credit to that copyright, um, then they get upset because they want their they want their take on the money that you're making. So, um, so I guess in a roundabout way, look for either royalty-free images, um, use your own photographs, or make it. Just don't sell it. So once you start getting into selling artwork, you've got other things to look into and business stuff. Um, so just make sure you are well educated as you move into different arenas of selling your artwork. All right, we got a few other little spots here with the black that I'm going to add. And this is kind of, a, looks like he's got a few extra little flume feathers, plume feathers. I can talk today. And I guess another t uh, point on the copyright, if you do follow a photographer and you like one of their photographs, reach out, send them an email and go, hey, I really want to paint this. Can I have your permission or what does it cost? You know, and you're at least opening up the conversation. Um, and the worst that they can say is no. Or they could say, yeah, sure, just send me a picture or this is what it costs. But, you know, honor the photographer that you want to recreate their image. You know, that's a compliment to them, hopefully. Okay, so I'm gonna look in the viewfinder real quick. It's looking pretty good. All right. So I think that kind of takes care of today's painting in about 45 minutes, not bad. And this is one that you could spend a lot more detail and a lot more time on. So don't feel like you have to paint them as fast as I'm doing these little demos. All right. 
So just looking to see if there's any other questions. It looks like we're good. And again, just love that you guys are talking with each other, hanging out, um, and just really grateful for this community that's developing. So thank you so much for honoring me with your time and hanging out. Thanks for making friends. Thanks for painting. Um, make sure you like and subscribe, like this video, subscribe to the channel, check out my online school, Paint with Lovejoy. Um, support your local businesses and artists. And we'll be here tomorrow painting flowers. So happy early Mother's Day to all the um, pet moms and human moms and just all the moms out there, all the people taking care of each other. So thank you for what you do. So I hope you guys have a great day and I will catch up with you tomorrow. Cheers.